Hey folks, welcome, welcome. Several people have asked me over the last while how to animate handwriting. So in this tutorial, I'll show how to firstly animate the pen or pencil motion and then how to use frame by frame animation to reveal the actual handwriting. All right, I've got everything set up in dreams here. Let's have a look at the layers. We've got a background, which is just a solid color with one of our paper textures on it. Uh, we've got the drawing, which is the word that we're going to reveal. And then we've got the hand group. Now, the hand group, it has the hand illustration and it also has the hand shadow. And I've done it like this because there's a little extra touch I want to add to the animation that I think will just help sell it a little bit better. The hand group itself, it could just be simple pencil or whatever you want to use, but uh, I'm going to move this entire hand around on the stage. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to animate the hand group. I'm going to set my anchor point Tap the three dots, move it, hit done. I'm going to put it at the tip of the pen. Now, I'm not going to do any rotation in this, but it can just be useful if you did want to add any extra touches, like have a little bit of wobble or rotation on the pencil, uh, which would look pretty cool. But I don't think it's going to work for this with the hand. So let's kick off. I'm going to go back to the start, add a move keyframe, move scale, and let's start with that off canvas. Just move forward in the timeline a little bit. Let's go to the start of the tip of the H and move forward in time a little bit and reposition it uh, let's see how that looks okay up to the top of the tip of the h the second stroke follow that down move over to the cross part and do the same again now let's check that for pacing Uh, it's possibly a little slow, uh, so I'll just drag some of these keyframes a little bit closer together. Obviously, if you've got a longer word, you don't want to take 20 seconds to reveal it, uh, but I've just picked a short one just for the sake of demo. I'm just going to tighten all of these up just a little bit. Just long press and drag on the keyframes to move them. Okay, could probably go a little bit quicker than that, but uh, I'll just work with this. Move over to the eye, go forward a few frames. There's a bit of a curve at the end of this, so I will add two keyframes. For the dot, I'll position it just above. Move forward, move it down. Go forward in the timeline again, go back up. Maybe we can go straight over. A little slower. And then go forward. then we can we can just move it off screen okay let's see how smooth all that looks okay if i was kind of doing this as a, a, a proper professional job i would take my time i would maybe change some of the easings and just get the timings really really perfect but i don't want to spend too long i just want to get the point across okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to reveal the text as it goes so let's go to where it just about starts so in this empty track i have here i'm going to draw the mask that's going to cover it it's not going to be visible but what it's going to do is wherever you have pixels on the screen it's going to reveal whatever's underneath it once we apply it as a layer mask let me show you i'm going to tap to go into drawing mode and i'm going to go into flipbook mode now the color doesn't matter in this but i'll just pick something yeah, okay, yellow. So I'm just going to wherever I want it to overlap with the ink and, and show off the text underneath. That's that's where I'm going to draw. If I long press on the individual frame and duplicate it and just keep doing that and just follow the motion of the pen as it moves. Doesn't matter if it goes outside the lines. But we will take care when we get to the the cross of the H because we don't we don't want to show off part of the cross stroke yet. So all I'm doing is just filling it in to where the location of the tip of the pencil is. Okay, let's see this in action. Now I'm gonna press on the timeline edit so I can select all of these. Now I'm gonna long press, I'm gonna group. 
And the other thing I'll do is I'm going to drag the end of this so that it covers the full length of the animation. I'm going to exit timeline edit and long press choose mask and layer mask. Now you'll notice that the, the colors have gone and it's only showing black and white. So wherever it's white is going to display the pixels underneath. And okay, so that's already working. There you'll notice if I go outside the group, everything suddenly appears back on screen. So all we'll do is we'll just move the drawing up so that there's nothing there to start. Okay, now I'm going to go back into this group. Now you'll find instead of instead of doing frame by frame for every single one, you'll find that there's some parts where nothing is changing. So for example, when I get to this part of the H, when the hand moves up to do the second stroke, there's actually nothing changing in terms of what's being revealed by the mask. So what I'm going to do is this last keyframe here, I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to find where the start of the next downward stroke begins. Okay, it's around there. I'm going to drag it back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap to edit and split. This split is so that when I go into flipbook mode again, Dreams recognizes that, okay, this is a new frame by frame sequence. I found it could be a little bit buggy if you try to continue doing uh, the frame by frame after you've elongated one of the frames like this. So this is just a, a way that I sort that out. Okay, let's go into draw mode, drag down for flipbook again. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. Long press, duplicate what's already there so we don't have to redo it. Long press, duplicate. And I'll probably just, you know, speed up a bit to this video because it's a little bit tedious to watch. Okay, so I've hit the end of that stroke as well. I'm going to tap done. And I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to drag out this last frame, move forward to where the start of the next stroke is, which is about here. Tap to edit and split that. And I'm going to go back into drawing mode, back into flipbook mode and do the same thing again. I'm going to duplicate what's already there, start to draw in the cross line. So this is one of the big benefits of having the hand animation already in place. You don't have to worry about timings, which can be incredibly difficult to do when you're working with frame by frame. OK, we've hit the point where there's nothing changing there again in terms of the mask. So let's find out where it starts at the eye. OK, done with that. Repeat the process. Find the start of the dot. We want it to reveal around there. All right, that's the last of that. So now that we've got all of the reveal done, it's going to drag very last frame and make sure it covers the rest of the animation. I am going to go back and just add a little extra touch to this now. This is why I have the shadow as a separate layer. So I've opened out the hand group. And what I want to do is I want to just give the effect that the pencil is lifting off the paper. So on the hand and shadow, I'm going to the hand shadow. I'm going to add a move and scale keyframes to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And because it's inside the main group that we just animated, it's going to move along with it. We want the shadow to get closer to the tip. So it looks like the hand is touching down on the page. So it's very quick and subtle, but it does make a difference, I think. After it finishes the stroke, we'll do the same again. Uh, I go forward a few frames to where it starts again. I'll tap to add another keyframe, so that'll keep the same settings as the previous one, and then just change the middle one. So we're going to lift off at the end of the H. We want it back down here. And we'll just do a little lift in the in between. And 
I think that should be just about it. Let's see how that all looks. There you have it. I'd probably go back and massage some of those keyframes around and just try to make it look a little bit more smooth, but I'm sure you'll get the idea from it. We're going to be adding lots more Dreams content over the next while, both quickie tutorials as well as some longer deep dive videos, so consider subscribing. We also recently launched our comprehensive Procreate Dreams course, which covers absolutely everything you can do with Dreams, so check out the link in the description if you're interested. Thanks!